Good morning. Welcome to Intentional Movement for Golfers. I'm Ash Sangoram, bringing you this movement practice. We're gonna start with a body scan. I want you to come into your body with attention to the crown of your head. Imagine just a little string pulling you up from the crown of your head, elongating, unlocking the ankles, the knees, the hips, letting that pelvic ball hang down. Deep breath in, elongates the spine, broadens the shoulders, softens the elbows. Easy wrists, restful hands, forgiving fingers. And we come to Three stack breaths, deep breaths in. Deep breaths out. Get the music going. Stack breaths in, deep breath in, arms up, blow it out, deep breath in, arms blow it out, deep breath in, arms up, blow it out. We're going to start rotating in place, rotating with the intention to remove resistance, tension, tightness, wherever you might find it. As we rotate, unlocking, unlocking some degree of freedom in your body. The intention is to remove resistance, tension, tightness, wherever you find it. And we'll bring our attention to the body part that I draw you to. Dig into that body part and unfold that intention. Keeping your awareness broad on a broad, puppet on a string, neutral, easy posture. Connecting into that neutral posture, ergonomic posture, and through the movement. So I invoke this metaphor of a spring water pump, drawing up water through our feet all the way up through the body as a way to focus attention at the different levels. And we start at the feet, noticing the connection between the feet and the ground softening, supple, making contact and spreading the feet across the floor, softening in, unlocking, easing, connecting, allowing the bones of the feet to settle in, the muscles of the feet to release some of their tension, just finding a good solid base, noticing the weight where your weight is across your feet. There is some weight transfer between right and left. Actually, there's three ways you can move in the rotation. You can more fully transfer weight left to right, turning towards or turning away from that posted leg. So, or you can weight transfer almost negligibly, staying on the central axis, rotating in place, unfolding this movement symmetrically. And there's no turning towards or turning away. I would play with all three of these, especially if you're 
attention starts to wander. We're still in the level of the feet, feeling the rotation in the feet, softening in, noticing the edge of the dynamic range of the rotation and how this feels in your body. And the water trickles up and rises into the ankle joints. Breathing into the movement, unlocking, unfolding. The joint capsules become the object of our awareness of the ankles. Noticing the weight transfer, gliding rather than grinding. The synovial fluid gets replaced, replenished, repleted. The cartilaginous tissues restore to their normal height. That cuboidal epithelium of the cartilage restored. We're not grinding, we're gliding here at the ankles. And at the edge of the dynamic range of your movement, noticing how you touch into this edge. Especially important for a golfer in transition on the swing. Noticing that that movement at transition is smooth, easy, unencumbered. Speed can be built later, but first that transition The more jerky, the more staccato it is, the less control you have over how it initiates. Noticing this gliding at the ankles in the transition, touching into the edge rather than bouncing off or banging into the edge. The water rises into the muscle groups that control and stabilize and that's where our focus goes, right below these muscle bellies. Your origins in and around the area right below the knee, your insertions down in and around the ankles. The entire muscle belly length softened, supple, easy, lengthened, and loosened. Still just rotating in place unfolding that ease, that removal of resistance, tension, tightness. Muscle bellies lengthen, troponin myosin chains at the microscopic level start to unlock during relaxation. That relaxation is being trusted more easily because of that puppet on a string posture. These muscles don't have to hold on tonic contraction for stabilization anymore finding an ease of presence. And through that ease, we're able to unlock these muscle groups. Breathing, unlocking, unfolding. This physical pump now, these muscle bellies contracting and relaxing, the agonist and antagonist pairs working in concert with each other. This allows this actual physical pump to start mobilizing fluid in our body. Interstitial fluid, extracellular fluid gets mobilized to move through the lymphatic system and the venous drainage system. The perfusion circulatory system improves flow to these tissues as the muscles relax and the water rises. Now we're at knee level. Noticing our knees here. Noticing that we can float and glide rather than grind at the knee joint level. The meniscus thickened, the synovial fluid replaced, replenished, repleted. There's some spaciousness in each joint. And yet efficient weight transfer, efficient ergonomic energy transfer up, for, up through each joint level, through the ankles and up through the knees now. Gliding effortlessly, easy, noticing the edge of the dynamic range come into focus now. At the edge of the dynamic range of each of these joints, how do we treat the joint? Some ease of movement, gliding in, touching in, rather than bouncing or banging in to the edge of the dynamic range. Again, important through your transition as you make that transition in your swing. As we scan up and get to the shoulders, once we do that, 
We can pick up a club if you'd like, but for the moment, this is just a swing to unlock, ease through the kinetic chain, stabilizing and powerful kinetic chain. We're envisioning this ergonomic kinetic chain becoming more efficient and easy at the same time. Water rises into the biggest muscle groups of our body, yeah. hamstrings, quadriceps, gluteal muscles, the pelvic girdle. These muscles that originate in and around the pelvic girdle, pelvic bowl, insert down and into the leg to control the hips, to control the knees. The water rises, quadriceps, hamstrings that flex and extend the knees now, softened, supple, lengthened, loosened. Breathing matching the movement here. With these muscle bellies relaxing a little bit, the natural tendency is to breathe deeper, to counteract this metabolic acidosis from lactic acid release, mobilizing the toxins in the muscle bellies mobilizing in the core, mobilizing in and around the pelvic girdle. These troponin myosin chains lengthen, the agonist antagonist pairs start to trust, start to trust each other. And trust that neutral posture to unlock and ease. Gliding through the range of motion especially critical here in the pelvic bowl. This is your powerhouse of the swing and enabling this to move gently, easily, and powerfully all at the same time. The transition is met by an initiation of the downswing as the ground forces get transmitted through this pelvic bowl to rotate, rotate the upper torso that then passively brings the arms along for the ride. So softening into this pelvic bowl, letting the water rise through as our attention draws in here, softening, softening at the right hip, so noticing the gliding, the weight transfer, playing with the weight transfer if your attention has wandered. Three modes to rotate. And those three modes can really be felt at the hip, rotating towards the posted leg, rotating away from the posted leg, or a very neutral rotation. This really mobilizes the range of motion in that pelvic bowl at each hip, allowing that pelvic bowl to glide across the stable table that's created by the two to hip joints. Breathing in, the water rises up and through the abdomen to the abdominal wall. This corset of tension that we might hold here, stress in the lower back, the connection between the pelvic bowl engine of the core, the mobile lumbar spine to allow connection to the torso still rotating with puppet on a string. We're not over the ball at a dress just yet. <sighs> Breathing, unlocking, unfolding. That breathing starts to breathe like the newborn baby, that deep, easy breathing, unlocking this tourniquet of tightness. There's stabilization that needs to occur in the back and the abdomen but to freely rotate through our range of motion, that X factor between the shoulders and the hips. If you consider those four points of a, a rectangle, noticing that, the, that rotation of the rectangular points relative to each other, the pelvic bowl leads through and the shoulders follow. And then at the edge of the dynamic range, the shoulder points may rotate through and past the rectangle 
at points of the, the base of the hips. Noticing this and allowing the torso, which means torsion to twist, torso can twist freely at the lumbar spine, mobilizing this tissue to allow that rotation. The edge of the dynamic range, feeling the five vertebrae at the lumbar level, unlock, unfold, some ease and some coordination. Even if we've had injuries here, mobilization in this level is important. Softening at L5, noticing some mobility setting, L4, L3, L2, and L1 to the thorax, this connection between mobility and a little more stability in the thoracic vertebrae. Feeling in, breathing into that back structure, that thoracolumbar junction to soften up and the, the level of the diaphragm, the bellows of the diaphragm drop into the abdomen as we've softened things up to allow an ease to set in. Breathing, unlocking, unfolding. Our attention goes into the thorax, that chest cavity, starting at the rib cage outwardly. The breathing opens and unlocks the rib cage at each vertebral level between each intercostal space. There's muscular tissue between the ribs. Noticing this softening up, the rotation, the edge of the rotation. How do we touch into this space? Not banging into, but gliding into the edge, all the way to the edge of this dynamic range. So it may be some tension does build up, but we still glide into and come back from to mobilize the relative movement between the shoulders and the hips through the torso, in particular, through the thoracic portion of the torso. Opening the space up, breathing into this, and the attention dives in inwardly to the interlock pumps of circulation and ventilation. Where the air goes, the blood follows. And this important conduit is really important for the, for the golf swing, the energetic swing being stabilized and fed oxygen at its time of need. You might draw in a breath and feel what a big inflated balloon might feel like through rotation. And then slowly exhaling, allowing that mobilization to notice what freedom might be available to you in your thoracic rib cage and abdomen through the exhale. And I might suggest that your swing, you might at address drawing a breath at the dress. Start your downswing at the same time you start an exhale, gentle, easy exhale to the top, and then a more forceful exhale through your swing to the follow through. Coordinating breath and body movement in this way can help you mobilize space, space to allow the coil of the spinal canal, spinal support muscles to mobilize in a way that's powerful, efficient. And so through these thoracic 12, we notice that mobility in the vertebral spine, breathing into that space and then unfolding the motion Thoracic rib cage mobilized, invigorated, open. T12, T11, T10, T9, T8, T7, T6, T5, T4, T3, T2, T1. And then if you imagine a dress a little bit more here with the head stable, looking at your ball and taking a more golf appropriate address rotating through this space the head still the cervical vertebrae needs space to operate 
the cervical ribs, the cervical spine needs that openness, mobility, strength. Because even with a still head, shoulders move underneath it. These muscles are working to stabilize your head. So that means some space created between the bowling ball and the shoulders, opening up the foramina. These are the nerve root outlets that help innervate the hand and the arms. And in order for that signal to come through more unimpeded, we need unimpinged space all the way up the spinal canal from the sacrum, lumbar spine, thoracic spine, cervical spine. Now we are neck deep in the spring water, rejuvenating, resetting, replenishing as we rotate. Intention is to remove resistance, tension, tightness. Swinging the arms passively here in at the top of the back swing. I would encourage you to swing both directions, even if you're righty, swing lefty. If you're lefty, swing righty rotating between which one feels like it's the top of the backswing and where you initiate the downswing. In both directions, you can do this. This is not the golf swing, but it is mobilization to feel your entire body from the ground up. Efficient transfer of energy through the ankles, through the knees, through the hips, through the pelvic bowl through the lumbar spine, through the thoracic spine, through the shoulders, broad shoulders, the exhale creating that movement through, softening the shoulders, softening the elbows, feeling the weight of the arms at the shoulders, feeling the weight of the forearms at the elbows in order to release them. If you want to have picked up a club here, you can, but even without a club, you can feel the weight of the hands at the wrists, feeling the weight of the fingers at the hands, really mobilizing a powerful rotation. Easy, gentle, and yet you can move a ball, focusing that kinetic energy at the point of impact. And if you've picked up a club here, really feeling the weight of the entire club in the hands. And this one unit that comes together is experienced passively, powerfully. So the lag is created as that pelvic bowl initiates the downswing space in the lumbar spine to operate, not crunching, but open, uncoiling, thoracic space through the exhale, creating a mobilization there, broadening the shoulders, easy elbows, restful wrists, harmless hands, forgiving fingers. We let this dangle to a halt through the body scan. That by itself can form a 20 minute scan of the body to allow you to do better. We stop this and move into the next portion, the movement portion of the exercise. <laughs> 